please be seated, please. Please, please, please be seated. I'm wearing a different cap today. So, I won't say hallelujah a lot. <laughs> you know, whenever I step up to speak in the office, whether addressing the board or anything, I'm always quick to say, please, if you hear, praise the Lord. Just say hallelujah. <laughs> because <laughs> you never can tell when that will jump out. <laughs> it's a life we know. It's a life we live. Um, there is work and there is a job. Okay? There's work and there's a job. Um... My work is to teach. My work is to mentor. My pastoring comes out of my work. Please, can you move the slides? My pastoring comes out of my work. Your work is your life assignment. Your job is what you are paid to do. Your work is what you are born to do. You can retire from your job, but you cannot retire from your work. You can be fired from your job, but you can never be fired from your work. Okay? So, my life assignment is to teach, and my job, and my work, my day job, actually, as the executive pastor of Global Harvest South Maryland, Lagos, is part of my work. But as part of my work, I also have what I'm trained and paid to do. And that's my job. I've done financial management for more than 20 years. I'm currently the country head for personal banking at Stambika BTC Bank. So I'm actually going to be standing here speaking to you as a financial management expert, which is what I've done for over two decades. I also consider myself an expert in the subject of leadership because I've made investments okay, in developing those competencies, and my doctorate degree is actually in leadership. So it's okay to call me Dr. Aheva. It's very okay. I heard someone say that, ah, all these things, it is worldly. How can you be saying, doctor, doctor, there's no big deal. He said, if I, if I get it, I won't answer it. In my mind, I was still on my own journey then. And I said to myself, I will answer my own. <laughs> It took nine years. Yes, it took nine years. <laughs> Combining banking with pastoring and everything. Then you say, oh, no, I'll answer it. <laughs> but today, I'm going to be taking us through an internationally certified wealth management model. It was developed by the Standard Bank. Standard Bank, you probably know that Standard Bank is, Stambic IBTC is owned, is a part of the Standard Bank Group. So there's a word my framework that has been developed, and you really have to be certified to even be able to deliver what I'm about to deliver. Okay, if you don't go through the certification program, they don't even allow you to teach the framework. Okay. The challenge with many Christians is that we trust God for breakthroughs. Breakthroughs will come. Somebody say amen. amen. But after the breakthroughs have come, you have to take the right decisions. True success is making the right decisions every day. It's not sudden. Every day. 
To sustain wealth, you have to have a good financial plan. You can't run away from it. Okay? And there's a framework that has been developed that we are going to be running through today for financial planning. I'll try and do this in 20 minutes just so I give more time for all the other things that will come up. At the center of the framework is you. Your family. It's you. You are the center. Okay? But the framework is on two sides. There is how you create value to the left, and then there is how you give purpose to the right. Okay? And there are four quadrants. So over the next 20 minutes, I'll take you through each of the four quadrants and how they help. Like was said, you need to make notes because there are times you are going to write some things down about yourself. If we had more time, I would have taken some feedback from the house, but I'm going to skip that just so we can do this very quickly. Okay? So, you create and build wealth. Okay? So, there's how you create. There's how you save. There's how you spend. And then there's how you give. Create. Save. Spend. And give. Let's say that together. Create. Create. Save. Spend. And then give. That's the framework, right? That we go through. Okay? And it's a journey every one of us can, we go through. So what you do first is to identify where you are on this journey. Because we are all at different stages of life's um, our goals, different, purpose, different. So it's really something you need to personalize, okay? The framework is based on five philosophies, five basic beliefs and principles. The first one is how you start with the end of mind. The second one is how you build wealth around your life purpose. Your life purpose is different from mine, okay? I have a colleague whose life's purpose is to visit as many countries as possible. That's our pursuit. So that's what she saves for. She gets bonuses, she gets everything she's saving, and she says, this, this year I'm going to visit three countries. And then she will say, I've visited 58 countries. I have about 70 to go. That's her life purpose. Okay? That's what she's driving. That's what she's practically living for. Okay? But I had a conversation with her because along the way, I found out that she has a good salary, invests in that life purpose, and everything is an expense. Yes. There's a difference between an expense and an investment. And there's a difference between also saving and investing. You need to know the difference. And, and, and some of this is part of what we are going to go through. Right? Wealth is a lifelong journey. There is nothing like arrival. Some of the richest people in the world have also become the poorest. After a while. I know a man who was earning 20, 20, 25 million Per game, per match, he was a boxer. By the time he stopped boxing, he was bankrupt. History has it that the average footballer, it was the Premier League that he did, right? The average Premier League footballer, any hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, pounds per week, three hundred thousand per week. Research has shown data that after three years of not playing football, many of them go broke. Slightly longer is the American basketballer. Just is five years. After five years, they go broke. Wealth management is a lifetime journey. 
is a school from which you never graduate. Because you have to continue to take the right decisions every day concerning yourself, your investment. Risk is relative. What one pays is consider a risk, another may consider not. Of course, you know the higher the risk, the higher the return. But of course, risk is higher because you can also suffer a bigger loss. Okay? And then you, your family, yourself, you are unique. So you cannot really pattern yourself after anybody else in your wealth management journey. There's a quotation that says, tension always seeks to resolve itself into the more stable state. If you take a rubber band, when you stretch it, you, for it to remain stretched, you have to hold it in place. Because once you relax, it will go to its normal state. To build wealth, you have to stretch yourself a bit sometimes. In the decisions you take, in the things you deprive yourself of. Okay? So there's a stretch that is required for you to continue to build wealth. Which one are you? Ordinarily, we'll spend some time here to look at the different personalities in terms of wealth. Can you move for me? There's a wary one. It's careful. There's the entrepreneur. There's a big spender. There's a smart one. So ordinarily, we should spend some time talking about this. Which one are you and so on and so forth. But we're going to skip that. And I'm going to just race quickly um, to the framework itself. Okay? After looking at the map, because we're all at different times. Okay? When you are young and promising, what should you be doing? When you are climbing in your career or business, what should you be doing? When you get married, have children. When you are dealing with children as parents. When you go into what they call retirement. I say what they call retirement because really you can't retire from your job. You cannot retire from your work, right? It's a lifetime. But when you go into retirement from your job, what should you be doing? And then there are, there, there are some things that advises us. You know, but running through this is budgeting and planning. Budgeting and planning. Whether as an individual, whether as a business, you just must have a plan. You can't just work any salary, start to spend. Once the salary is done for that month, you are waiting for the next salary. Okay? And many people are just in that vicious circle. The salary is not enough, you go do some borrowing to meet up, next salary comes, a portion starts to go towards setting your debt. You see that, oh, it's still not enough. You are looking for the next loan. And on our, in our job, we have to help many people to restructure their bookie of loans. Yeah, because they have one, two, three. They've taken this from this app. We have all kinds of apps now these days where you can take loans. They've gone to do all of those borrowings. They are now at a point where their take-home pay cannot take them home. Yeah. So one of the things we do, I have some of my colleagues at the back, we do, do, we do that portfolio management. Okay, They can sit down with you, look at your portfolio, and then maybe help you to consolidate your loan, stretch it longer, you are paying less, and then you can thin it out over time. Because there's a time to get leverage. Okay? From a financial planning perspective, a loan is a leverage. There's a time to get that leverage, but your plan is to pay it off over time. Okay? So the right structure, the right tenor, the right planning, it's something that you require, and there's a team of experts here who can guide you when you go to them. Okay, so let's go to the framework very quickly. Clean and create and build. Remember I said create? Create. The second one I said what? It's time to test whether you are really listening. Create. Second one is what? Save. The third one is what? The fourth one is what? Give. Absolutely. So let's start with how you create and build wealth. Okay, in your financial planning. Create and build wealth. Um, you see, there are different journeys. Help me accelerate now. There are like two or three slides you need to move to. Create and build. There are different journeys to making wealth. There are some slides I'll spend some time, others I'll race through. Okay? 
There are some, so you, you, you have to choose your journey. You have to choose your journey. It's important to know the journey that you are on, okay? If you look at the top there, it talks about the entrepreneur. It's a journey. It talks about a corporate employee who is building a career, right? Yeah. And then it talks about the self-employed. Okay? And then there is passive income. These are the various pathways that you will find. Some things are immutable, they are indelible. It may not sound nice to you, but you can't change them. Number one, nobody ever built wealth from depending on only salary. You can't be the first. There is nothing like that. I've heard people say, no, everyone cannot be entrepreneurs. You cannot depend on only salary and attain wealth. Forget it. The salary system was not built that way. You cannot. If you grow fast enough in your career and earn enough, you may now begin to invest. And then your investment can bring returns. But no matter how much you earn, I don't care in which currency, if all you have is a salary, you're never going to attain financial independence. It has never happened. You will not be the first. It's a myth. It's a myth. So what was best if you are in the career path is to miss a match. You're earning, you're investing. You're earning, you are trying out some business, either directly or in partnership, okay? And when you move on to the next slide for me very quickly, you will see the international model, okay? There can be exceptions, but you see the international model. If all of these people start at the same spot, okay, for the corporate employee who has a steadily growing career, okay, okay, it is slow and steady. And you may attain some level if you continuously go in your career. But the advice is that as you are growing, you begin to think of investment and entrepreneurship. Okay? When you do self-employment, you're going to look as if you are raised ahead a bit. But if you remain as a self-employed, eventually you are going to plateau. Because if you don't work, you don't eat. That is self-employed, right? You don't work, you don't eat. It's your effort. Only you are now working for yourself. Different from working for someone. So you can gain more opportunities, you can try more things, so you can seem to get ahead at the beginning. But if you don't diversify, you're going to hit a plateau and you'll never be able to grow your wealth beyond a certain level. But look at the entrepreneur. You can see it's the wavy line. Because it's the riskiest. Challenges will come. Fair price will go up. You shut down your generator. You pay rent. You move to your property. But it has been demonstrated internationally that it is the surest way to hit financial independence. So what do we advise? If you're a corporate employer, you're doing great. It is still good for you, perhaps. You can begin to. Toy with entrepreneurship while you are still on the job. But the time will come, your business will kill your job. It will be big enough to the extent that your job becomes a distraction. Yeah. That is when Rachel bought Joseph and Jacob went to Laban. Let me go. That I may provide for my own home. Okay? You miss it when you leave the corporate line suddenly and go and start entrepreneurship. It works sometimes, but it's never really the best advice. 
Last week, we were dealing with an issue of his, a guy who, had, who came to resign. He just resigned. Everyone was begging, what's happening? He said, I'm tired. My salary is not enough. I have some loans I'm not able to pay. We were begging him. He angrily left. That was Friday. On Monday, he came back to withdraw the resignation. I'm sure he went to church. His pastor told him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm praying for you, but this is not of God. Guess what? The bank refused. Yeah, sorry. We can't take you back. He now went on social media. I started writing things about it. But that's how the team who came to my plate to see, I look at this, your staff has gone on social media. But you see, it's never the best. So you find a way, find something, find something. Okay? While you are still earning, it's stressful. But find something you are partnering with. You know, I spoke to us at, at some point about, okay? So that's what I'm going to take on the create and build. Um, there's supposed to be a think tank. If you move on, somewhere we should think, write some things down. But let me skip that and quickly move on to the second quadrant. Live and enjoy. Live and enjoy. Create, spend. This is where you spend. Uh, and the questions to ask here are, what are the things you spend on? Yes. No matter how much you earn, if you spend everything, you will always be broke. Yes. You will always be broke. Okay? So, you have to Look at the right kind of expenditure. Let me move on to the next slide where we talk about your income, your expenses. What are you? Where do you earn from? You earn a salary. Perhaps you have made some investment in property. Like some of you will make here today. Say amen. You are making investment in some property or some property investment or some property technology. And you are earning something from there. And then you're also earning interest from some monies that you have put aside. What we recommend is to diversify. Okay? Diversify. Okay? And then look at your expenses. They are the fixed, they are the variable, and they are the unforeseen. There is a global standard for how you should divide your expenditure. Please move on to the next slide for me. This is a global standard. It varies from person to person, but... Your fixed cost should not take more than half of your earning. Yeah, it's what you work towards. And then there are variable and unseen costs. Some of these you put aside for the rainy day, as they call it. But consistently proven, both by scripture, the richest man in Babylon, the world, the scripture, everything says, you just must have a portion of your earnings, whether in salary or in business, that you are directing towards your financial goals. You must. You must. The guidance is 20%. That's the guidance. It's 20%. The guy will say, I don't even earn enough to take care of myself. How can I save 10%? My answer always, always is, what 90% can't handle, 100% can't handle it. Yes. Yes. You're not worse off. You may be pressured, but you're not worse off. You have needs of 200,000, you have 100,000. Save 10% and direct 90,000 towards those needs of 200,000. Because 100,000 will not even do it anyway. You still need to find other sources. So it takes training and discipline to do that consistently over time. Because when you don't do that, no matter what you do, no matter how much you earn, you will never build financial independence. So reflect, where do you spend money? I told you of the one that spends on travels. Vacation, homes. If we had time, you should really take paper and write this down. What percentage do I spend on communication? Data, what percentage on entertainment, what percentage. If there are expense lines that are not covered here, you should write them down. You really need to track this over time. 
Have a journal. Have an expense journal. Where you write down your expenses. And seeing how you match them to your revenue. Okay? Quickly, we have good and bad assets. Okay? And sometimes it's relative. Okay? Good, bad. Which of these? Looking out of my window every day in the office, there are two yachts. One is black, one is white. They are always there. I've never looked at one day without they being there. Two of them belong to two of the richest men in, the, in Nigeria. Probably in Africa. I don't want to mention their names. They are always there permanently. Is it an asset? Is, is that a good asset or a bad asset? <laughs> yeah, because a car can be a good asset, it can be a bad one. Typically, something that does not increase in value with time, but depreciates in value with time, is a bad asset. Something that cannot generate some revenue by itself is a bad asset. So you have to look at how you invest in good assets. iPhone 25 has come out. I'm tired of this iPhone 23 that I'm carrying. I must carry the latest. Is iPhone 25. I'm just saying 25 because I use an iPhone, I don't know which year. Because I probably use it for I probably use one for another 10 years. <laughs> Until iPhone 86 comes out. <laughs> I'm still using my iPhone 6 or 7. <laughs> And I saw someone investing in iPhones, and I was, is this person smart? Before I realized that she has an online store. So taking good picture to post is extremely important. So for her, it's an investment. Because when she puts her picture out there, it attracts people. So it makes money for her. Okay? Someone sent me some things of, some houses to sell. And I got back to him, I said, brother, with this quality of pictures, nobody will buy your house. You can't be taking lucky pictures. You want to sell a house in lucky with this quality of pictures, no one will buy. Go and invest in a good phone. That becomes an investment. Right? Okay. So that's an example of good assets, bad assets, and you have to be, and you have to be. Uh, and you have to pay attention. Can you let me move on? I, I, I need to move on to the last two very quickly. I'm spending time on this one. This is really where the spending is really crucial. Okay, because if you're in debt, you have to manage yourself out of it. Okay, you have to. Like I said, it's good as leverage for a period, but you can't remain in debt for too long. Not even at the rates in Nigeria. Do you know that if you borrow today in Nigeria at current rates, every three years it doubles? Yes. If you borrow 10 million, over a three year period, you are going to pay back 20 million. Yes. At current rates. That's the way it is. So you have to be very certain what you are borrowing for. So we say don't borrow to fund expenses, borrow for investment. But be sure to turn yourself out of it very quickly. Okay? So, you, you, you have to be aware. To get out of debt, stop borrowing. People are in debt, they keep borrowing. They're in debt, they keep borrowing. They say when you find yourself in the hole, stop digging, right? Yeah. Stop borrowing, and then you can now tame yourself out. Okay? You be, start by paying off your most expensive debt. You are the ones who quickly pay off. Can you move on to the next slide for me? Okay? Uh, we normally say pay, pay, pay off your credit card very quickly. Okay? And then... You can sell assets, pay off your debts, okay, so that you free yourself. Let's move on quickly to quadrant three, save and invest. 
Again, I will spend time on this. I, I should start to round up now. Uh, but I already told you that to save, uh, saving is crucial. Okay? 10%, 20%. You are not saving to keep per se. Okay? It is towards your financial goal. So you must have your clear financial goals. And that certain percentage um, is, is, is towards... See, move on. Please, just, just move on. There's one slide I want to touch on and then we can... Yeah, save and invest. Move on to the next one. Okay. Next slide. Okay. So to reach financial independence, no, 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 just the one before this, the one before this. So you must have financial goals. That's the point. Have financial goals, and your your savings and investment are towards those goals. You need to know that there's only like sudden wealth. Don't you understand? They know that sudden wealth. So you're going to be moving towards your goals gradually, gradually, yeah, gradually. While you are on that journey, let me tell you what God does. Breakthroughs will come. It will lift you, right? And then you continue, you continue, you continue. The next lift will come. Then you continue, you continue. That's how you build wealth. It's not from one to a hundred. One to two to three. God blesses you, you move to ten. Okay? You continue, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He blesses you. That's our journey. Everyone, that's the journey, okay? It's not sudden. It's with planning. It's with clear goals that you put before him. For example, set a goal for your retirement. Set a goal for it. Don't desire to work all your life till retirement age. Which is 60. People are angry. 60 is too, is too low. And many organizations have made, have made it 65 for them. By the time you are done at 65... You can no longer stand up straight. <laughs> Too sad if you have no investments, no assets, nothing. You probably just worked all your life and there is nothing to refer back to. Okay? Next slide says, do not save what is left after spending. This is the philosophy for saving. Do not say, okay, I'll quickly, I'll pay my fees, I'll, I'll, I'll drop money for the house, I'll buy fuel, I'll leave some money, and then I'll save what is left. You will never save. You will never save. When it comes, the portion that is meant towards your financial goals, first your tithe, okay, because the tithe is an investment. Yeah. So make that investment, and then put aside your saving, and then start to spend the rest. It is a myth to say that I don't have enough, so I'm not saving. No. What you have after saving will not be enough. If what you have after saving will not be enough, what you have without saving will still not be enough. So there is some discipline that is required for you to ensure that you are saving towards your financial goals. Okay? Let me move on quickly to the last one. I, I want to save time. Okay? There are reasons to save. I've already spoken to that already. You are building financial security. You are building, um, you know, some goals, right? You are a young man. You're planning to save towards your wedding. Okay? There has to be a plan for that. Your children, medical, okay, whether it's a health insurance you want to do. If you are the one that wants to go with retirement age of 65 that they've set. <laughs> you know, we had someone coming, wanting to borrow. This guy has two loans. He was wanted to take a third one. And we're so okay, let's consolidate for you. We'll, we'll take those two loans. Put them in a bucket and manage the portfolio for you, okay? By the time he put in the request, we saw that, ah, this guy is already 61. So the request was declined. Because for us, we don't, our, our mark age is 60. We don't learn to be above, above 60. By 60, you have to have finished paying. In other words, if you are taking a four-year loan, you have to be like 56 or 55. So that before 60, you have finished paying us. But this guy was 61. He was angry. He wrote letters. He now went to the office and got a letter 
to tell us that retirement age is 65. So we can create that loan for him. And we did. We did. We did. But think about it. If at that age, you still have to have three loans to go buy. You've made a lot of wrong financial decisions in the past. And you are still very much on that path. Creating more and more debt. And that happens when there is no savings plan. Nothing is kept aside every month. You work for a whole year. Nothing was kept aside. You are trusting God for a breakthrough only. That is the life of many Christians. It is not sustainable. Programs like this are put together. You are not there. Busy, but life is not easy. You just must have how you save for your goals. There's a slide that talks about some have called it the eighth wonder of the world. That's compounding. Can you put that for me? Compounding. <laughs> Is the eighth wonder of the world. The most powerful natural force is gravity. Points downward. The second most powerful natural force is compounding. When you understand it, you earn it. When you don't understand it, you will pay it. Yeah. Either way, it's powerful when you're on the right side of it. Okay? It's just a caution we give when people go into multiple borrowings as a way to survive. The last quadrant, share and legacy. I was excited when Pastor George was telling us about some insurance folks in the house. We also have insurance subsidiaries as well. Because as you grow wealth, you will discover the need for insurance. Insurance is not a bad omen. It's not a bad omen. It's wisdom. It's leveraging the common wealth to protect yourself and your assets. Okay? Yeah. So you have, you, you must have insurances, you must have home. Live in a house is not insured. It's not right. Insure your house. Insure the assets. Insure your car. Do you understand? You are, you, are, you are not praying that evil must happen. You understand? But you, you, are, you, you are not Jesus now. Huh? You don't walk on water. Yeah. You don't walk on water. So, I mean, as careful as you drive, drunken people will still run into you. But you can say, no, it won't happen. I will not have accident. You will not have accident in Jesus' name. But why not someone runs into you, you place a call, take some pictures and send, and take Uba and go. Yes. Because it's insured. They come sort it out. They fix the vehicle. That's an example. Okay. A man ran into some guy, I don't know what kind of vehicle, it was he a Lexus that time or whatever. And the guy just came out. He just stood him out, opened the boot, opened, he opened the boot. He just entered inside, he said, please carry me home. Let me go and do ask boy for you. <laughs> so insurance is how you preserve wealth for the generation. Okay? Something else we recommend, like I said, I'm not standing here as pastor, I'm standing here as a financial management expert. Write a will. Write a will. It is not on Christian. Women 
Tell your husband to write a will. He needs to. Both as pastor and a financial manager, we have seen people suffer untold troubles when the unforeseen happens. Write a will. You can start with a simple will. A simple will is 5,000 naira per annum. You can start with that. It's not expensive. There are folks at the back that can guide you. 5,000 naira, just a simple will. That protects your fund, protects your pension, and all of those. And then you can move on to a comprehensive will. It's important to have a plan for legacy. Okay? Have a plan for legacy. Part of legacy is your investment in the next generation. How you touch lives, how you, how you touch the community around you. Okay? Wealth is not only about you, yourself, and you, me, myself, and I, and your family. It's a community. There are people to touch. There are people who can feed. There are people who can pay fees. There are people who need 50000 just to start a business. It is part of the share and legacy. And the last one, if you go back to that framework, just keep moving. I'm, I'm sure at some point you get to that framework. Let me, let me close this. I hope it's there. Yeah, just move on. If you look at that framework, circling everything is a plan and protect. Okay? So you create, you save, you spend, you give. The giving is the one that is popular, so it was the next generation. But inside all of that is the plan and protect. That is where insurance comes in. Okay? Move on. I'm done. I'm on. Just move on. One last quote, and I have to be gone because I've already taken more time than needed. Just running through the framework. Let me move. Can you move now, please? There's a quote in this deck that says, a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. Keep moving, you'll get there. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by actions. It is what makes your dream come true. So what am I saying? Don't spend this whole day just sitting down and listening. I can see people just listening. You're not taking notes, nothing. You are not at a supercomputer. Take notes. Live here with one decision that you are going to execute, that you are going to act on. Just one. And that's how a plan back by actions will make your dream come true. I'm done. Just put the last slide for me. The last slide is a QR code. You can snap it. It gives you an opportunity to just give us some basic information and then someone can get out, reach out to you, have a conversation for a, a, a clinic. This is just a framework, but we can have a, a deeper clinic and also help you to solve some of your financial goals and answer some of your questions. Thank you very much.